Preston Physics, Grade 11, Energy Work and Power, Note 2, Work. Now when we're talking about energy, we always talk about it being the ability to do work. But what is work? Well, work is force times displacement, where our W is our work measured, and that's going to always be in joules. We talked about that yesterday. Force is always going to be measured in newtons, that's F, it's our applied force, or our net force a lot of the time. And D is going to be our displacement, and it's going to be measured in meters. Now it's very important to remember that work is force times displacement, not distance. If we look at this shopping cart example, where we have a person pushing a shopping cart around in a circle. Now the first example, we're going halfway around the circle. So when we look at this, we're going to find our distance to be the diameter of the circle. Now the circle was a radius of 5 meters, so we do 2 times r, and our diameter is then 10 meters. Our force was 12 newtons, so when we calculate our work, we get 120 joules. For the second part, we've gone all the way around the circle now. This is very similar to our velocity question in the first unit, where we have a displacement of 0 doesn't matter what the force is because 0 times anything is going to give, give us 0. So our work is 0 joules. Now if we're looking at a question where we have a force and a displacement but they're given an angle, they're not in line with each other, there's an easy way for us to account for this. So normally what we're going to have is our displacement and our force are kind of in the same direction with some angle theta in between them. We just change our equation to be work equals force times displacement times cos theta. So in our lawnmower question, we have a displacement straightforward. We're pushing down at an angle of 30 degrees. And then our force is going to be 15 newtons. Our displacement is 8 meters. And we need to find out what our work is, not our theta. So we have force times displacement times cos theta. And then we end up with an answer of 103.9 joules. Now there's three conditions that we're going to look at that make our work equal to zero or no work is being done. So what we have to do for this to be accomplished is have our work formula be equal to zero. So the first way would, to do it would be to make our force equal to zero. When force equals zero, we have zero times displacement, which is zero. An example of this is just an asteroid floating around in space. There's no force being applied to it, but it does have a displacement, but there's no work being done. The second being when the displacement's zero. We have force times zero, that's going to be zero again. And it's something like if you're pushing on an object and the object won't move, while well, we're going to have a work being done of zero joules. The last one's the hardest one. It's when we have our force and our displacement being perpendicular to each other. This actually means that we're going to end up with cos 90, which means we're applying a force at a 90 degree angle, but cos 90 is equal to 0. So we end up getting a work being done of 0 joules. This is like if you're holding a drink up, but you're walking forward with it. No work is being done. The other important thing to look at about this is where the little arrow was drawn in that last formula. This is a dot product. What that means is that it has to be done in the same plane. We have to be doing everything in the same direction, otherwise it doesn't work. So in this case, we're doing things perpendicular to one another, so therefore they're going to be equal to zero. The last thing we're going to look at is the work energy theorem and negative work. Now, what the work energy theorem is telling us is that any work we do is actually equal to the change in energy of an object. So, when we're looking at this, the amount of work done to any object is equal to the change in the object's energy. If we're looking at throwing a football, we do some work to throw that football. So the first thing that happens is we do work moving the football forward some distance. Now, when we look at that, the work changes from work to energy, but it's moving at a speed, so it's kinetic energy. So the work done here is now kinetic energy. 
The next thing we're looking at is lifting a box. Well, we lift that box up off the ground a certain height. On the ground, it's got no gravitational energy. But when we lift it up a certain height, we do work to lift it. And the work turns into gravitational energy. So here the work is now gravitational potential energy. The last thing we're going to look at is negative work. Now, the only thing that's different about work and negative work is that the direction we're doing them in is the opposite of what the force applied is. So if the force is applied to the left, the work would be done to the right. The force was applied to the right, the work would be done to the left. If we look at the friction on a box, the friction always opposes what we're doing. That's going to be negative work. It's the opposite direction of what we're looking at, so we have a negative value. It's the same as any vector we've looked at before. We'll fill in the summary at the bottom of your page tomorrow as a group in class. The questions associated with this note are 2 to 8 in your yellow duotang from the third unit.